In 2009, the two largest desktop processor manufacturers, Intel and AMD, were in the process of creating two next generation processor architectures, codenamed Sandy Bridge and Bulldozer, respectively. When released, these products became the Intel Core i second generation and AMD FX series. For the past few years, AMD's previous microarchitectures delivered poorer performance than Intel's lineup, and therefore the new Bulldozer lineup was seen as an opportunity to achieve parity or exceed Intel's efforts. Intel's Sandy Bridge launch was strong, with the product offering excellent performance for the money. When the flagship Bulldozer product launched, the FX8150 processor, the media and technology press were unimpressed, citing it as a failure and highlighting how the single core performance of the processor was worse than that of the previous generations. The other processors in the family, the FX6100 and FX4100 series, were also reviewed as unimpressive. This hurt the company in the long run. Microprocessor development is a multi-year process and as a result, Subsequent architectures were also based upon this design. This resulted in the company losing market share for years to come, hitting a low of just 17% of all PC sales in late 2016, according to Passmark. Additionally, the company suffered large losses for the next few years, posting a massive loss of $497 million in 2016. Since the launch, the Bulldozer architecture and its derived successes have earned the reputation of one of the biggest failures in the computing landscape in recent memory. However, while the overall processing power was underwhelming, there was nothing intrinsically wrong with the product. The price of the lineup was low enough that it was worth the purchase if the user was doing multi-threaded workloads regularly. It is therefore puzzling as to why the processor lineup is so notorious for being a failure. To answer this question, we need to look at benchmarks, and in this case taken from Anantec. In gaming benchmarks, the FX8150 performs poorly against the competition and rarely pulls ahead of AMD's previous flagship, the Phenom 2 X6-1100T Black Edition. In Civilization V, World of Warcraft and Starcraft 2 for example, the performance difference is pretty noticeable. In workstation benchmarks however, the FX8150 performs better, but still not that great. It pulls ahead or equal with Sandy Bridge i5s and i7s in some tasks, but loses in others. The performance deficit was due to the design of the bulldozer architecture being radically different than that of the Thuban architecture used in the Phenom 2 X6, the previous generation processor. Instead of having each processor made up of individual cores, each with their own floating point scheduler, each bulldozer core, called a module, was actually just two individual cores that shared the same resources, including the floating point scheduler. This radical approach was supposed to deliver better power efficiency and scalability, but it took a performance hit of roughly 15% compared to traditional design. The processor also had a very limited amount of cache, which had very high latency, which was one of the reasons which let down gaming performance. Another key issue was that Bulldozer paid a heavy penalty for incorrect branch prediction, in comparison to Sandy Bridge, which paid a lighter penalty. Finally, the architecture itself was designed more for the server market than it was for the desktop, which limited its potential in certain tasks. It's also important to note that it was hampered by limitations at the time. Because the architecture was different from a typical desktop processor, Windows 7 had not been optimised for the FX processor line, which hurt performance and increased power draw. One of these features was core parking, where the processor shuts down cores that aren't being used in order to save power. 
This was not working correctly when the initial review launched. It was only after several UEFI updates and operating system updates that this feature was enabled. When the FX processor line was tested on Windows 8 Preview, the performance improved and power draw was reduced. Additionally, when the reviews were released, all games tested ran using either OpenGL or Microsoft's D3D10. These graphics APIs were not very low level and not very multi-threaded, which means that games using these interfaces would rarely be able to use all eight bulldozer cores. It is only since 2016, with the release and adoption of Tourette 3D12 from Microsoft and Vulkan from the Kronos Group, the gaming performance can scale well with multiple cores. While the performance of Bulldozer was perhaps slightly limited by these factors, it is clear that the performance generally was underwhelming. But to understand why people have such a poor memory and view of the Bulldozer architecture, it is important to look at other influences. One of the reasons that the Bulldozer architecture's performance seems so lacklustre is because of how successful Intel's Sandy Bridge architecture was. Launched before Bulldozer, the performance was a large improvement over Intel's previous architecture. It also overclocked well and was extremely well priced. It isn't so much that Bulldozer is a failure, more that it didn't represent the step forward in performance and value that Sandy Bridge achieved. The architecture itself was also overhyped to the extreme. For example, in early 2011, AMD claimed that their Bulldozer samples were up to 50% faster than the Phenom 2 processors of the time. As seen in the benchmarks, this level of performance was simply not present in the final version. An important to note is that the technology press were also very excited for the new architecture. When the architecture was announced, AMD's new core design was seen as having huge potential. For example, technology website Gizmodo stated that the new core design could potentially offer quote, phenomenal performance. Again, this was not seen in the final product. It is also worth mentioning power. When a new architecture is released, the idea is not only that performance improves, but also efficiency. However, the bulldozer FX processors were very power hungry under load, which means the processors would get hotter, fans would run louder, users would require more expensive cooling, and the processors themselves would fail more frequently. The competition, Sandy Bridge, was very power efficient for the time, and therefore not only was the performance of Bulldozer objectively worse than Sandy Bridge, but it also drew more power. This again did not help AMD to convince the users that their new architecture was advanced in comparison to the competitions. Finally, the Bulldozer systems saw problems in the data center. Bulldozer was originally designed to be a server CPU that was then designed for the home user, whereas Sandy Bridge was built for the home user first. However, the high power consumption of Bulldozer meant that it wasn't suitable for large array of servers due to the cost of cooling. Not only that, but upon launch the Linux performance was significantly worse than expected, and it took approximately 6 months for the true Linux performance to be seen. By that time, many in the server community dismissed the bulldozer-based Optron CPUs. This resulted in AMD's server market share dropping to less than 1% of the market by 2016. It is fair to say that AMD's bulldozer architecture was not what either the consumer or what AMD was hoping for. However, I believe that its status as a failed product is overstated. The biggest problem with Bulldozer is not the processor itself, but the timing of its release and the computing landscape at that point. Games were not optimised to take advantage of the 8 cores, and Intel's phenomenal Sandy Bridge represented a large leap forward in performance per dollar that AMD simply could not keep up with. Regardless of its true performance or AMD's public image, 
The real legacy of Bulldozer is not the performance issues, but how much it hurt AMD in the long run. AMD could only price Bulldozer up to a certain point, and therefore it meant profit margins were low and not much money could be made on the product. This meant that Intel could price their high-end products however much they wanted, and in the process posted record revenue at a time where AMD was losing hundreds of millions of dollars a year. Additionally, AMD's loss of market share in the server industry also allowed Intel to get a strong foothold in that market. Luckily, with the recently released Ryzen and Epic processors, AMD looks set to take back market share in the home and server. Only time will tell how successful that becomes. And hopefully, that was a bit of technology.